Hey, sixth graders, Mr. Ronin here. Uh, feeling a little under the weather this morning, but the video had to be made, so excuse my uh, voice if I sound a little, little weird or groggy. Uh, but in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the area of triangles. We spent the last few days of class talking about this, and uh, I'll just try to, within 10, 15 minutes, try to summarize what we talked about over the last few days in class. So before we do anything with triangles, we have to make sure we have a firm foundation of parallelograms. So it's important to know what a parallelogram is. A parallelogram is a shape that has four sides, as we can see with this rectangle right here. With one, two, three, four sides, and the opposite sides are parallel. If you follow my mouse here, we can we can clearly see that if these lines, these opposite sides, were to extend, they would never cross. They would never cross, so they're parallel. Thus, parallelograms, and the opposite sides also have the same measurements. So we know that if this side right here is 7, the side directly across from it will also be 7 meters. If the base right here is 12 meters, we know the side uh, directly across from it will also be 12 meters. And we also talked about uh, how to find the area of rectangles, which would end up being us multiplying our base by our height. So in this case, we would multiply 12 times 7 and we would get 84 meters squared. We could also say seven is our base, we could say 12 is our height. It doesn't really matter, we would still get the same answer in the end. So, how can we find the area of triangles? Well, it's important to notice, right here, we have a four-sided shape. Don't worry about this diagonal line, this is an imaginary line, not part of the actual shape. This, pair, uh, this shape right here is four sides, it's opposite sides, it looks like they're about the same length. We don't, we're not given the information to tell us what each measurement is, but we can make the assumption that they're the same length. And we can also say that the opposite sides are parallel. They will never cross. So we're making the assumption that this shape right here is a parallelogram, and it is. What I want you to notice is this parallelogram right here can be broken up into two identical triangles. That's where this diagonal line comes in. If we break that rectangle in, uh, in half through two opposite uh, vertexes, or vertices rather, we'll have two triangles, two triangles that are identical. This will be important as we move on. Know that parallelograms can be broken up into two identical triangles, or vice versa, two identical triangles like these can be put together to form a parallelogram like this. So this all leads us to our uh, to find the formula of a triangle. So let's remember, like we just talked about before, the area of a parallelogram is based on its height. If you want to find the area of any parallelogram, we'll multiply its base by its height, or its height by its base. The order doesn't necessarily matter. So with this shape right here, with this parallelogram, we see that our base is six units long, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Base is six units. How tall is this parallelogram, or what is its height? So one, two, three, four. So our base is 6, our height is 4, we multiply those together, we'll get 24 square units. And if you don't believe me, just count the individual boxes, and you'll see that I was not making anything up, that there are actually 24 boxes in this parallelogram. I want you to notice how this parallelogram, like how we did in this slide, this parallelogram was broken up into two identical triangles. So is this one. We have a blue triangle, and we have a orangish yellow triangle, not sure what we call that color, uh, but it's, it's broken up into two identical triangles. And if we know that the area of this entire parallelogram is 24 square units, or 24 units squared, and we know that it's broken up into two triangles that are identical, meaning they look exactly the same, therefore they have the same area, we can make the conclusion that the area of one of these triangles is half of the area of this entire shape since this parallelogram is broken in half. So the area of one of the identical triangles in the parallelogram is 12 square units or half of the area of the parallelogram. Remember we said the area of this parallelogram is 24. It's broken up in half, broken into two equal triangles rather. So one of those triangles has to equal 12 units. The other equals 12 units. If you put that together, you get 24. Therefore, we can 
make the conclusion that the formula to find the area of a triangle is area equals base times height, just like the area of a parallelogram, the formula for uh, to find the area of a parallelogram, divided by two, right? Because the area of a triangle is a par is the area of a parallelogram broken in half. So we could say area equals base times height divided by two, or we could also say area equals one half base times the height. We'll get the same answer using either formula. I think sometimes we have an easier time dividing by two rather than multiplying by one half. So now we're going to try one. Let's keep in mind at the top right corner of our formula to find the area of a triangle. Or our two formulas, I guess, but they're they're basically the same thing when it all comes down to it. When it all comes down to it. So we're going to try one. Here's an example of a triangle. First thing we need to recognize, just like when we found our uh, uh, when we were looking for the area of parallelograms, let's look for that little box. We call it the right angle. Let's look for that right angle. You see it right down here. And I want to identify what sides or what lines are connected to this box. Let's look at this line or this side called eight. I'm going to drag along with this mouse. At no point does my mouse come in contact with this right angle. Therefore, we're not going to use this measurement in our formula. Let's take a look at 11. I'm going to start right up here. At no point does my mouse come in contact with that right angle, so we will not use that in our measurement. If I go to our, if I go to our right angle, I see that so the side called 10. Well, this is the imaginary side, right? Because this is a dotted line. Comes in contact with the box. And the side called 12 comes in contact with the box or the right angle. Therefore, we're going to use the measurements 10 and 12 when finding the area of our triangle. So what is our base? Well, we could say our base is 12 because it comes in contact with the right angle. We could also say our base is 10. It doesn't really matter. Just like with parallelogram, the order doesn't matter. It's called the commutative property. Uh, with multiplication, no matter what, we'll still get the same answer. It does not depend on the order we multiply our numbers in. So we'll say, we'll just, for this uh, problem sake, we'll say our base is 12. And what is our height? What is the measurement that goes directly or straight up? from our base of 12. Well, we see 10 goes straight up. Notice how 8 is a slanted line in relation to 12. 11 is a slanted line in relation to 12. And this, this right angle tells us that 10 goes straight up in comparison, to our in comparison to our base. So we will multiply 12 and 10 together. That's just super important because most of us uh, in class, a lot of us wanted to stop right there. We say, ah, base is 12. Height is 10. Our area is 120 units squared. The end. End of story. That's our answer. On to the next problem, Mr. Ronan. That is not quite true. We still have to remember we're dealing with a triangle, not a parallelogram. Triangles, two identical triangles will form a parallelogram. Therefore, we have to divide that area by 2. So we have 12 times 10. That'll give us 120. We're going to divide that by 2, and 120 divided by 2 is 60. So when we plug these values into the formula, we'll get 60 square units. So the area of this triangle is 60 square units. We'll try one more. Remember, our formula is going to be right up here in the top right corner. We'll use that as a reference. And again, first thing I want to do, I want to figure out, or I want to do, uh, locate where our right angle is. I see it right here. And what two measurements are attached to that right angle? It looks like it looks like 5 is coming into contact with our right angle and it looks like 14 is coming into contact with that right angle. 6 clearly is not. It's not touching the right angle. 12 is not touching that right angle. So the two numbers we're going to use to find the area of this triangle are 14 and 5. So we're going to say, well, we'll answer the first question, what is our base? We'll go ahead and call 14 our base. Again, if we wanted to use 5 as our base, it wouldn't matter. We'll still get the same answer, but for now, we're just going to use 14 as our base. What is our height? We have to identify what, what measurement or what line is going straight up, straight up in comparison to 14. It looks like 6, is, six right here is a slanted measurement. 
in relation to base. So let's pretend that, real quick, let's just slow down a second. I feel like my thoughts are all scattered here. I hope you're able to stay with me. I'm sorry about this. Um, we're going to pretend 14, the side called 14, is the ground. And we're going to pretend we are getting our height measured. We're at the doctor's office. They're measuring our height. If we look like this, if we are slanted like this, we cannot get an accurate height measurement. If we're slanted like this, which would be pretty impressive if you can slant your body like this and not lose balance, but if you're slanted like this, you cannot get your height measured because you're not standing straight. This uh, measurement called five, however, is standing straight up. We can get the height of that. So five will be our height, and we multiply these two together, base times height, we'll get 14 times five, and we'll get 70 units squared, and that is our area of this triangle, right? Nope, we have to divide by two. Because remember, we're not dealing with a parallelogram, we're dealing with a triangle, so we have to do one more step, and that is to break that area into two, or divide it by two. When we, when we divide uh, 14 times five, which is 70, when we divide that by two, we'll end up with 35 square units. 35 square units. So hopefully, hopefully that cleared some things up. Uh, if there is any confusion, if not, you'll see me in class on Monday. Please be sure to ask me any questions we still have. Um, yeah, thanks for watching my video. Hopefully it was helpful and uh, proud of you guys for making that extra effort to watch these videos. See you guys in class.